there. <laughs> Next, you'll probably teach us how to read. Uh, not. Uh, it's like I actually hate to eat apples. I just like to drink. drink exactly. Apples. Oh, he's like stole yeah. words out of my mouth. I love the way you think. Um, uh, no, I'm a unitasker. I make one thing out of apples. Um, so. I make, I, I make an apple pie once a year. Yeah, she, yeah, she's great. But, that's it. Uh, but I don't know anything. I don't know sauce. So that's I don't know, no good. I don't know pies. I don't know jack shit. I just know cider. And uh, pickling veggies. Let's not discredit y'all. No, 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 no. Could when be it, strong. When it comes really to good. apples, um, mm-hmm. I really, I think one way. I don't even want to smear peanut butter on them anymore the way I used to. Ooh, I do, <laughs> just not the way I used to anymore. It seems, yeah. like, it seems like a waste. That's a pretty strong <laughs> afternoon snack. <laughs> See, the funny thing is, is, it seems like you guys have been doing this for like 40 years almost. But first of all, too, I never knew an apple tree could be 35 feet tall. I'm, the, the, I guess maybe I've never seen a the, damn apple tree. The, the reason is most uh, most apple trees, modern apple trees, are actually two different organisms. One is the tree that grows the apple. It's called the sinewood, and the other one is a rootstock that dictates how big the tree is. So now they're like they graft them onto small rootstocks. So modern trees are pretty small and tight. Increasingly, orchards look more and more like vineyards. But if you just planted an apple seed. Nearly for sure you'd get the standard run of the mill rootstock, which is like 30 plus feet tall, and that apple tree lives forever. It's a gigantic pain to pick. So a 35 foot tall apple tree to get every last apple is like impossible unless you have a whole team. Um, but they live forever, and they're the same size. Well, not forever, by my standards, forever. And they they're the same size underground, really, as they are above ground. So the bigger the tree above ground, they have giant tap roots, and they anchor themselves super well. I've heard that. And they in t- science. And they and they and they take care of themselves super well. So those st- those standard trees can be like planted in a park or among like in people's backyards or whatever, and people can ignore them literally for 80 years. And they take perfect care of themselves, and then somebody who cares about making booze out of apples comes walking by, and it's it's awesome. It's like a time warp. You get to taste what people used to drink right here. So one other question as we still kind of nerd out, and then we'll dive into some other stuff. But yeah, we'll can get you, we'll can get you, you make ciders later. out of like pear. I mean, like, do people make pear cider? Is that something it's you called, guys? It's called a perry. That's what it's called, technically. Um, pears and apples are in the same family, so cider is technically apple, and perry is pear. So, do you guys so are they pear? like kissing cousins, or like where on the line are, on the fornication rules? So, so, so they're, they're called Second, they're, they're called palm fruit. Uh, there are three of them: uh, apples, pears, and quince. Uh, I ferment pears uh, once a year, and um, I assure you, I don't have a quince cider. <laughs> uh, but uh, traditional cider making cultures like England, France, and Spain, they all fermented pears as well. They're similar biochemically and they grow similar kind of. And uh, so I do ferment pears. I like them, but I don't love them. I'm super captivated by apples, but um, my grower has some really cool pears that we do showcase. But the heart of the business really is apples. And and one other nerd <laughs> question, like when I when I was over in It's better uh, be a good one, Chris. Yeah. Your last well, when I was over C-. in minus. England I'm sorry. Now you've got me all flustered. Uh, <laughs> but like not all cider's carbonated, is it? No. Like so I mean because I remember like I had a few that were still... really high alcohol content. Yeah. And they weren't, they didn't have this kind of carbonation to them. So a cider can be still, a a cider could be, you know, lightly carbonated and a cider can be highly carbonated. Um, We enjoy sparkling wine. Ditto. And like the carbonation, so we are aiming to mimic the same thing. Um, But there are many ciders around the world that are not carbonated. Yeah, okay. And so I feel like I've probably, again, limited sampling. And they've all been carbonated, but these kind of knocked my socks off. This has changed my interpretation, my thoughts on what a cider was. So Excellent. for those that have bought them for... And, or, and you just poured Isapis Pitsenberg. I'm not... Uh, please, t- this is t- an English-speaking podcast. That's right. Uh, <laughs> not, not to bring up your least favorite person, but this was uh, one of Thomas Jefferson's favorite eating apples. I don't and actually he, hate TJ, not nearly as much as some other ones. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you can hate him as long as you also like him for his apple love. I recognize him <laughs> as a real gardener. That's important. Yes. There we go. go. It, it, I, it's, I, uh, 
he was a philanderer as well, but we I, won't no, dive into that. I, but, 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 but I don't like him for that reason. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. As long as we're all on the same team here, and I'll also see you have a large nitrous can, canister over there. So we're going to be really good friends the whole uh, afternoon. All night long. Yeah, yeah. all night long. I brought my own balloon. Wait, it, uh, important nitrogen, not nitrous. Um. Are we splitting hands? Are we splitting hands? <laughs> Forget you're the scientist. Um, but dude, I was thinking like oysters. Uh, that, that will give you the bends, not the high. True. <laughs> I haven't had any of the bends. But oysters would be good with some of this stuff. Yeah, we've got some things that are like a white wine where you would totally pair a fish with that or oysters or shellfish like that. We've got some things that are more tannic and bold that would pair that pair really nicely with like red meat and then one of our accounts is Hop Alley and they pair some of our things that even are a little sweeter with their super spicy Szechuan I can't say that word. Chicken? Yes. That's and one of their best meals. It's ever. amazing. And it goes really well with something that's a little bit sweeter that can kind of cut through that spice. So But that's if we're point. right, we're claiming apples have the range of grapes, just people don't know it yet. So just like I can find a wine to pair with nearly any meal our contention is there's an apple out there that will do it too. And okay. we're trying to prove that. Like, just like if somebody came up to me and they said they were a red wine person, I think I can find a cider they like. I think you've, yeah, you've proven that. Like, I expressed that earlier. Like, it doesn't matter necessarily what your taste buds may be, like, hitting on. Or, like, if you're a beer guy or a craft beer guy, I def- you'll, you'll definitely appreciate the, the multitude of flavors. But if you're not a beer or cider guy at all, you have been able to place me. You put me on two or three here today that are fucking delicious. So thank and you. you've only had two or three, right? So that, <laughs> that, that is true. That, that is true. And, well, and, no, no, but that's the Manchurian's that, still my favorite. I think. Good, yeah. but you should you should have a favorite, right? If I served you three wines, you would definitely have a favorite and a least favorite. And otherwise, it's a boring product, right? Yeah. If, they're, if they're all tied for third, they all suck, right? They. Meaning, Fuck, that means this podcast isn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly, if you aren't first, you're last. <laughs> <laughs> and he totally redeemed himself. <laughs> well, yeah, so we've kind of gotten a little bit into the weeds uh, for the nerds out there and for the beer snobs. They definitely have gotten to uh, their little uh, their cut of the pie. You see what I did there? Yeah, oh, that's good. But uh, that's only half the podcast, so I know what y'all are thinking. <laughs> Shit, y'all are now in the woods. <laughs> no, y'all have been here for a while now, and it seems you especially. Shoot, you uh, know, apple puns, let's get to the core of the issue. <laughs> fucking right, dude. You stole that one. From us. That's good. Oh, that's really well played. Your podcast by is really appealing. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Damn it, that did work too. No, it's we, apples it and oranges. <laughs> <laughs> she tricked you. Shit, we are not funny. <laughs> Y'all need to start a podcast. Yeah. Uh, just don't uh, tell us about it because that'll hurt my feelings. But um, yeah, so we can be our guests. Oh, stop! Oh. I'm, I'm gonna blush a little bit. They already are drinking they in just our bar. Yeah, and no. <laughs> uh, it's not the last time y'all will see me. That is for sure. Um, but yeah, so we like to do on this podcast. We like to ask some questions to kind of we got to know y'all, but we also kind of want to know what our fans can relate to when y'all aren't at work. Y'all okay. mentioned y'all have fuck tons of families, so y'all may not have as much free time as <laughs> the next one. But these next couple questions that I'm going to let Chris lead off with, as long as he doesn't screw it up, are some of y'all's tops of the town. You know, okay. Denver dives, or in this case, the Aurora dives. Um, <laughs> any of those that you want to give a shout out? This is kind of our time to do that. But I'll leave it with Chris. You asked the first question. Yeah, I mean, we're drinking today right around, like, happy hour time. This is a pretty premium happy hour. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and say, you guys know a babysitter or somebody can take care of the kiddos. So where's your happy hour spot around town that we like to go to if we get a shot? I mean, y'all obviously have great taste, so So people would like to hit out. if I had to highlight, it's it's a happy hour, but it's a happy hour that's, I think, one, one, one day a month. Um, I think it's the first Tuesday of every month at Arcana. They have something called uh, Terroir Tuesday, uh, where they uh, let their patrons uh, try a wine for, like, barely above wholesale, for, like, cheaper than you can get at a liquor store. But it's, like, at the restaurant with awesome happy hour. At at, Arcana? Yeah, apps for, like, barely anything. It's called Terroir Tuesday. If you really want to have a cool wine experience for, like, the cheapest damn price you can find anywhere. Arcana's Terroir Tuesday is probably the best sip at a bar anywhere 
I haven't. We haven't heard that, and we've and we've had people mention Arcana before, and we actually tried to swing through there last time we were in Boulder, but we're gonna have to fucking go up there on a Tuesday. And for those that are curious, y'all are kind of on the same as the industry days, like where Mondays and Tuesdays are your days off, so that you know y'all may not be able to get all the great spots. But that's what happened to us with Arcana. We tried to go up there, and they were like, yeah. "Sorry, we're closed." I was like, "Shit, we're not in Boulder often." We're going yeah. to have to make a trip up on a yeah. Tuesday. Cool. Yeah, a couple times we've want, tried to go somewhere, and we're like, oh, we all have the same day off. Yeah, like, shit. Yeah, <laughs> I know we have good. a few accounts that aren't open on, like, Monday or Tuesday, mm-hmm. and that was, like, there was a time when that was the only time we had a babysitter. And so, yeah, there are a lot of places that are on our bucket list where our cider is served. Um, <laughs> we just yeah. want to eat a meal there? Yes, <laughs> very much. Like, you know, we don't even give a shit about food. No. Just, we, just wanna... we just like to eat your food, please. Cool. And get away from the family for just a yes. um, Shout out to the babysitters. Yes. This is going to be a quick question for people with kids. Uh, shout out to Team Condoms. Um, Trojan, sponsor us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I even forgot what we were saying. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea where you were going with that. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll go another way. Oh, I was going to say a family-friendly meal because we don't actually ask that question often. Oh, I thought that was a pretty good one. That so, is a good one. Yeah, thank you. So if y'all were going to do a family night out for dinner, where would y'all go? We don't generally take our kids anymore. No, but I mean, so, so our kids are like, what, four and 19 months? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, at least so, yeah. I, will, yeah. I, will, I will throw this out there. I've taken them a couple times for a quick lunch at the Lowry Beer Garden. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, and like that is like, but that's like fast that's enough like picnic that I can, tables and, yeah. yeah. Right. Is that and the like, one with the air, the, near the airspace area? Yeah. yeah. And it's like fast enough that like the 18 month old doesn't start freaking out. And we live like half a mile from there. So, so it's like, Perfect. Can jet home as soon as meltdowns happen. When things get messy. Yes. I thought that was gonna be a good question. I <laughs> yeah, knew I had. Yeah. A, I knew good. I had something. It was in there. Trojan threw me off. Well, yeah. well, if we get a babysitter at nighttime, where where was either the last place you went on date night, or where is another place you want to go to on date go? night? Recently. Let's talk about where we want to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's probably nice. a better question. We'll tag them so that they'll know that y'all gave them yeah. a shout out. And maybe our, I know, I know, I know. Little I know. Wolf's Taylor, we've been trying to get there for dinner. Yeah, Kelly our, Whitaker's spot is possibly that's our, that's yes. my favorite restaurant in town. It's really it's good. Very so, yeah, so uh, at one point or another, we've been on the menu of all of their restaurants. So that's uh, Basta Dry Storage. Uh, they help run the acreage property that Stem runs in Lafayette and Wolf's Taylor. Our last date, I just remembered, it was Mercantile. Oh it was, yeah, it was freaking it's fantastic. And um, this is a weird last date, but I think this probably qualifies. We got to pour at this farm dinner at Larkspur at uh, Fruition Did Farms. y'all do the thing with Alex Outside where you did yeah. the yeah. 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 So, oh, so and then they, that and then, so amazing. we got to, like, we poured for the cocktail hour portion of it, like the beginning, we're at the bar, and then they comped us two seats. And, like, we went and we poured one more time walking down the whole table, but, like, we pretty much got to sit and just enjoy the whole thing. That, that table was, that, like, 400 yards long. It was yeah, so it was like, long. I think they said 230 um, people. Yeah. But, it, but uh, I have to say... That was a cool state ever. Check out Outstanding in the Fields website, and when they put their tickets on sale, it's 100% worth it to go to their dinner. It's an incredible meal, and the view is amazing. They just did one where it was, like, Alone and Caroline. That's the uh, one we were at. Okay, yeah. yeah. So now, I mean, I think we pretty much had everyone from that fucking yes. dinner on our podcast, yes. yet we so haven't you, been to that goddamn dinner. You yeah. need to go. Uh, it was amazing. I'll buy, the company's buying us tickets. We are no longer accepting but free it, meals. But they do stuff we're buying like all over. I've heard it's great. I think they do stuff like all over the world. Yeah. I want to say like I've yeah. seen one done at like a beach. Yeah, yeah they had one in California. Incredible. They had one in like Idaho recently. I, and, and and we've we've only done one of them. I'm I'm sure a big part of the reason why it's successful is that the, because y'all are there and our look. Duh. Our local chefs are incredible. Uh, it was cool. We were the only local alcohol product oh, nice. there. Uh, but by the time we left, we felt like we definitely had a place there. Pairs are different, right? You're taking your first sip of uh, the one Perry I made this last year. Yeah, have you tried this? Perry I haven't. Yet? I'm actually, I have, no, I'm enjoying the es, the Esperus Spitzenberg. Exactly. The, the, the Did I say it right? It rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, and no. he's fully educated. Um, so, so the pair... Ninth grade was tough for some of yeah, us. Especially in Mississippi. Uh, so the pair... <laughs> man, that was a burn. That came out of nowhere. Good thing your uh, mic's been off yeah. for an hour. 
but the pear doesn't seem to be as sweet as the or, or it's got a different like kind of bitterness. T- totally different mouthfeel flavor, and it's different enough that I know it's good, but it's not my core competency. The people who dig pears and geek out on them are every bit as geeky as I am, and it's enough.